What is up you guys today we're going to talk about timing your buy-ins now I want to preface this video by saying that this is not just for trading like most of the techniques and strategies I talk about that actually revolve around trading a lot of it's good for long-term investing as well and we're going to get into that later on um, as well I'm going to make a video explaining how to get out of a company or how to get out of a trade and when I think is the best time to sell and how to time your you know your, your sales and should you let your profits run, how to let your profits run, all of that. That's going to be the next video that I'm going to make. So make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with that. And while I was making that video, I was kind of like, hold on, maybe I should just elaborate and explain how you should be buying into these companies, how you should be buying into these trades and the different methods that I use because I've been doing this for a long time, six years full time as a profession. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've made a lot of great accomplishments and a lot of it has to do with my strategy around buying into a company or just buying into a position. So let's get started. All right. So right now on the screen, you can see that we have Pfizer. The ticker is PFE. Now, because the market's been absolutely crazy, we don't really get these perfect you know, trading ranges like we can see right here with Pfizer. If we take a look real quick, you can see that we have a price point of you know a channel basically between forty dollars and thirty two dollars um you can see that we've basically for the past year just been trading sideways right we've pushed up to forty dollars and ninety seven cents at one point pulled all the way down to twenty seven but overall pfizer just kind of moves sideways for the past year um now anybody who is looking at this would say well why don't you just buy at the bottom and just sell at the top and you know what it really is that easy no i wish it was that easy um but you know if you play the game of probabilities when it comes to trading and we'll talk about investing in a bit yeah you really could just buy at the bottom and buy at the top but there's a lot of important things that go into purchasing uh you know and starting a trade because we all know the market doesn't move perfectly and i'm going to show you this right a lot of it say well it's manipulation by market makers a lot of it say that you know, it just it sometimes we break support and then we quickly recover. So let's take a look and let's say that you wanted to purchase into Pfizer on this big first dip. And you have to remember, please pretend that all of this over here is not here yet. Let's pretend that we're just looking at this. Nothing to the right has already happened. Well, if we have a resistance around 40 and a support down around 32, then all you would have to do is purchase at $32 yes you're right but here's the thing and this is the main takeaway from this video anytime you start a position long term or short term for a swing trade or an option you should break down your buy-ins to at least three separate times maybe four times some people do it twice but i like to do three times and this is why let's say that we just wanted to get ten thousand dollars worth of shares on uh, pfe or pfizer if I were to purchase $10,000 worth of shares at 32 bucks, look what happened. The stock took a major hit. Now, in this case, a, a break of support would be considered around $29.27. That would have been a great place to actually cut your losses. So if I were to purchase at 32 bucks for $10,000 and it fell all the way down to $29.49, I would be down $800 because 8% of $10,000 would be 800 bucks and I would kind of have to just sell because if my portfolio is only worth ten thousand dollars the support on the ticker that I'm trading is broken and I don't have any more money to average down with and please guys don't ever average down with margin I know a lot of people who do that please don't do that but if it's broken support if you don't have any more money in your account to actually average down on this position with you should cut your loss you really should so in this case, look what happened, right? You would have lost 800 bucks. This thing would have went down to $27.88 and then it would have soared. Over the next 35 days, you would have missed out on $4,200. And so this is why I never, never put all of my money into the play instantly unless it's something that I have such high conviction with, which I do do that sometimes. But unless it's something I have such crazy high conviction about, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. So in this instance, what I would have done is just split my full position 
into three buy-ins. So say I have $10,000 or I plan to, you know, put $10,000 into this trade. I would split it up into three $3,333.33 buy-ins. So for instance, right here, let's just say that I wanted my first buy-in at $3,250 because honestly, I don't ever want to buy perfectly at support. Yes, you could get the best price, but it's really not that important to buy at the perfect price because sometimes we'll come down we'll you'll be pennies literally pennies close to, to triggering your order and it just won't go off and you'll miss the trade so in this instance i would have set my first buy-in and i'm going to label these with just like some little uh blue dots here so my first buy-in would have been right around let's say 32 dollars and 50 cents then my second buy-in because right now I'm in, right? And let's just look at it this way. If I purchase $3,000 worth at $32.50, then whatever. If it just rips, I'm not going to make that much money. I'd still make 20%, but I only make 20% on $3,000, which is not really a lot of money. Um, but in this next case, what I would do is, okay, we come down to the actual support. I would have averaged down around $31. So I would take a second position for 31 bucks which is a pretty good price because we're going to get an average on this price. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. We have to do some math. Um, so my second purchase is at $31. So in this case, say as soon as I purchase the second one, boom, the stock rips, then I'm going to make a little bit more money. It sucks because I didn't get fully into the position with all the money that I wanted, but at least I played it safe. At least I have, you know, two thirds of my position in and now the stock goes up. The point of dollar cost averaging is to lower your risk to the downside. So now in this case, let's say that the stock actually keeps falling and I get one more buy-in, one more really good buy-in. I have to remember, the more buy-ins you get, the smarter you have to be with the buy-in. So the first buy-in's like, whatever, I just want to get into the position. The second buy-in's like, okay, we're at key support levels, um, or if you're, you're getting puts, we're at key resistance levels. I'm going to go with the second buy-in. The third buy-in has to be literally the the best possible time to buy in. And then after the third buy-in is when you really have to be careful with your stop losses. We'll talk about that in a minute. So in this case, I get my last and final buy-in at $28.91. We'll just call it $29. Now in this case, I have an average price now because I've had three separate buy-ins. So in order to figure this out, I'm gonna have to do it on my little handy dandy calculator. We first got in at $32.50. And then we got in again at 31 and then we got in at what was that $29 even we'll say you know 29 so then divide that by three we have an average of well we have an average of close actually how, how do you figure out averages guys see i'm so so bad at doing this 30 to 50 plus 31 plus We'll say 29, 92 divided by three. Okay, we have an average of $30.83. Sorry guys, I, I must have typed something in wrong. I was like, I'm pretty sure I know how to figure out averages. So at this point, we actually have an average of $30.83. You guys are probably like, what the hell? The kid doesn't know how to how to do averages and he works with numbers full time? No. Um. So right now we have an average of $30.83 and it's a pretty good price. Now, at this point, I would have probably set a stop loss down to 27.12 because at this point, like I'm hoping for a bounce to happen, but if the bounce doesn't happen, I'm screwed. But guess what? In this case, it would have went all the way up. I purchased at $30.80 um, $30 and then eventually I could have sold for 26% profit or that would have been like 2,700 bucks. And what you need to understand here is that me taking three separate purchases is actually helping me risk to the downside but it's allowing me to stay in the play longer i'm going to make a video in the coming weeks explaining why you should be trading with less money than you really think you do um or that you think you need to because one of the biggest things that helped me after i lost twenty six thousand dollars like five years ago in a week one of the biggest things that helped me was actually going back and trading with less money because if you just throw all your money in the trade in the beginning you're not going to allow it time to breathe that's what i say but you can see here that the stock, you know, Pfizer didn't just go straight up. We actually had some dips and then a push back up. And if you actually continue to to buy in and buy in and buy in, then 
you're gonna allow more time and then you could have done that again here so for instance let's look here the second time it went all the way up you would have sold you would have waited and look what happened perfectly so in this instance i would have got in with one position it never would have gotten to the point where i filled with three and i would have made 25 percent on you know three thousand dollars so that time it kind of would have not screwed me i just wouldn't have made as much money but then again i would have made money and that's the goal that's what's important so let's take a look at something like take two interactive and i kind of want to explain you know i actually have a position in this and i kind of want to explain where i took my positions and why and then we're going to get into long-term investing i'm going to explain the same thing sort of here one thing you'll notice here is a great bull flag pattern so for those of you who do not know what a bull flag pattern is essentially this is your flag pole and then this is kind of your flag what normally happens here about 70 to 80 percent of the time is we get a big push big pullback with consolidation and then we get another push that actually gets to the highs or about 180 dollars or a higher high so if you guys are watching this the day i put it out there's a free play for you um but in this case i saw great opportunity to break out here and now i did buy options with this so the options same thing will work here so i bought my first contract right around here i'm just going to put a little red line here i bought my first contract at 167 dollars. then we had a big sell-off on friday due to everything that's happening i can't say it or i'll get demonetized and i took a second position right here now i saved enough money for a third buy-in just in case something crazy happens it didn't happen so far so as of right now i'm in with my second buy-in hopefully we get a big move to the upside now what i want to really stress as far as the trading is considered is you don't want to just average down to average down right like let's take a look at um carnival cruise lines we all know what's been going on with carnival cruise lines you know with the whole roni situation look at what happened here um that's spce that's not right okay let's look at what happened here right we had a pretty strong support before the whole Rona, we had a pretty strong support right here at 42 bucks. Now imagine you started buying at 44, you averaged down at 42, and then after we had this big gap down, you averaged down at 39. You do not want to just average down and average down and average down and average down and just pray, say a little prayer on our father and hope that the stock bounces and then you make money. You don't want to do that. Risk management is the single-handed most important thing when it comes to trading stocks and when it comes to being profitable, consistently profitable. And you don't wanna just be like, I'm gonna average down, average down, average down, it's gonna to have to bounce one day, especially with options, because with options, they're constantly decaying. So the big point I wanna get across is look at something like CCL, right? This is kind of a black swan event where the thing dies 85% in 42 days, but you know, Crazy things happen, guys. I don't want to see you guys just like average down, average down, average down. So it's very important to separate your buy-ins into three separate purchases. So let's look at a long-term investment uh, example. Now, something I want to talk about with you guys is the fact that it's weird when it comes to the long-term, you know, kind of community. A lot of people are like the old school Warren Buffett where they just buy and they hold and they dollar cost average and they, they own the same stock for like 10, 15, 20 years. I'm not one of those people I truly believe with long-term investing that because of the internet companies become relevant and irrelevant so freaking fast it's insane right and so for me I'm more of an active long-term investor I like to be active when I'm picking my long-term companies I like to be kind of a yeah, just an active investor I, I like to constantly be on top constantly researching constantly listening to earnings calls um, and seeing what's going on with the company and the way that I look at it, and I've heard Jim Cramer say it, Jim Cramer gets, <laughs> side note, a really bad reputation on CNBC, but a lot of his books are actually really good. And he talks about a sweater, right? If I bought this sweater for 80 bucks today, and in three weeks, the sweater is worth $250, ask yourself, would I buy the sweater again for $250? No. And if you answered the same way that I did and say, no, I wouldn't spend $250 on this sweater, then you might want to think about potentially, you know, selling or scaling out. Now, that is for another video, but as far as a long-term investment is considered, you don't have to be as pinpoint with your buy-ins as you have to be with, uh, you know, trading. With trading, it's all about specifically where you're buying in, what your averages are. 
But when I'm starting a position in a company, this is what I like to do. So let's look at GAN. GAN is a phenomenal long-term investment. I feel very, very bullish about this company over the next five to 10 years. Um, yes, is it risky? Of course it is. All investing is risky. But for me, I really like this. I think it's a good long-term investment. When I first started buying GAN, I just wanted to get in. Like I just, I just wanted to get in. This thing kept going up and up and up and up and up. And I did it with Peloton too. And I made like 60% returns on Peloton before I sold it. I just wanted to get into GAN. So I took my first buy-in on this drop when GAN went down to $20 and 30 cents. I was like, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to take my first buy-in here. It's whatever. Look what ended up happening. It actually sold off in the next coming weeks, 13%. I took my second buy-in down around 13%. It fell all the way down. I took my last buy-in on Friday when it was trading around $15.23. So I have a really nice average. And today it's up 14% and I'm actually up 9% overall on my investment. So I'm really happy. So the point is, even with investing, I always believe that you should be averaging down into these investments, especially if it's a company that is not going up. If you like to play like recovery um, types of investments, like I know a lot of people who are interested are interested in like AMC. I know a lot of people who are interested in CCL. I know a lot of people who are interested in uh, like Caesars and different. Um, well, Caesars has actually recovered pretty well, but like Marriott and all these different companies who were hit by Rona. If you're somebody who's doing that, right? For instance, back here in March when the sky was falling and the world was you know falling apart. You didn't want to just, you know, look at CZR. So we had a 40% drop in nine days. It's really, really, really crazy. Imagine if you wanted to put $40,000 into CZR and you just bought it. You just bought $40,000 worth of CZR. <laughs> you would have been pretty pissed. And now, yes, of course, six months, seven months, eight months later, we're all the way back up to $44, but you would have had to hold through losing another 85% of your money in the next 14 days. And I'm telling you, you might say to yourself right now, like, oh, who cares, right? I just would have held, I would have held it. It's all right, whatever, I don't care. No, if you would have went from $40,000 all the way down to like $12,000, 90% of you guys, including myself, would be like, yo, hit, hit the oh crap button, get me out of here, I don't want to be in this. But that's why, what if you would have bought 10,000 at 40, then 10,000 at 30? 10,000 at 10 or um 20 and then 10,000 at 10 dollars you would have had a pretty damn good price of an average of like 20 bucks a share and right now you would be up a lot so let me know what you guys think make sure you hit the like button down below comment do you use this strategy as well we do have a private stock market academy where i go live like this every single morning i explain what i'm trading why i'm trading we have 55 hours of courses uh, and lectures that i do just like this but in chronological order in a very deep and more i would say information packed uh lectures so and also I, I do a lot of live lectures too so you guys can actually interact with us there so uh, i'll put the link down below you get 90 percent off your first month i want to make sure it's something that's good for you guys um so you can start for ten dollars right now uh hit the link down below make sure you hit subscribe and thank you guys once again have a good day peace